Hello, my brothers and my sisters. Welcome. Welcome to another lovely episode of Simplify. And I greet you, as usual. I greet you in the most beloved brethren, the grain of peace, the grain of the pious, the grain of the beloveds, the grain of Salam. May the peace and blessings of Almighty God be with you, guide you, and always and always show up for you and myself. Amin. Amin. Today's episode. Mm. Let me first start by by saying this. You know, in the um, pillars of Islam or articles of faith, articles of faith. One of the articles of faith is believing in Qadar, believing in destiny. When in our making do we write our destiny? We don't write our destiny from heaven. That's not when we write our destiny. We don't write our destiny when Allah makes us. No. We write our destiny in the womb. In the womb. In one of the trimesters. You know, when the woman's when this when when the semen and the egg connect, and the the woman starts feeling the butterfly effect. That's not when we write the destiny. When things are connecting, and now there is head, there is bo bone is about to start forming, and and there is brain. So. There will be two angels, and the angels will be standing next to the fetus. The, the angels will then ask the baby, the fetus, what are you going? I'm going to the world. What are you going there to do? And that's when the baby will start saying, it's like a check checkbook. Like they'll be checking it. They'll be checking it. So how long do you want to stay? You know, like, like you go to the uh, uh, embassy or you get to the airport at the, at the, at the port of entry. What, what are you coming for? What are you going to do? How long do you want to stay? What is your mission? What do you want to go there to do? That's when we write our destiny. And some people, they write their destiny when they say, how long are you going there to stay? Because we have never been to this journey before. Some fearers will say, mm, because we know where we are coming from. We know where our spirit was coming from, 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 from heaven. So some babies, they don't want to spend too long on that journey that is unknown. So they may say, a baby may say, I just want to take a look. So the baby that says, I just want to take a look. I hear the hype about it. I just want to see what it looks like. Those are the ones, when they come, they leave. Right from the hospital. Some they may even say they have a stillborn. Some, some doesn't even come at all. Some comes, as soon as they cry, the mother enjoys the baby for a few, the baby leaves. Some may say, um... When I go, I want to live a long time. It depends. So that's when we write our destiny. And sometimes the destinies that we write in, 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 in connection or conjunction with the parent of that baby, the baby may say, I want to leave this stage. However, when the mother makes her destiny, the time that the mother writes may be longer than the time that this unborn is writing. So that is why um, the baby, the child, even if the child is 30 years old, 80 years old, the mother is still alive or the father is still alive when the baby passes. 
So instances like that can happen. And also, what are you going there to be or to do? Some babies may say, I'm going there to be a life-changing person. I want to go there to be, you know, we'll get into that later. Let me go into today's topic. Today's topic is, um, I want to dedicate it to somebody special in my life. And you know when, I was a blind mission, so anyway, you, give me one moment because this is very, very uh, emotional for me. So I'm actually going to be dedicating this episode to someone very important in my life. And I'm going to describe the person first. Um, my father, Alaji Baba, is in the class of his own. But this person, after my mom and my grandmother, my grandmother and my mother, this mother is the next in line in my life. And then, of course, followed by everybody else in the hierarchy. When a, when a poet wants to express any feeling towards someone that they love, they write poem. When a musician wants to express feelings towards someone they love, they compose music. This is how, this is my amplifier. This is the way that I will extend this to you, mommy. When I was growing up, and I know in Islam we don't want to say God mother, it's okay. So I'm not using that word from biblical or Islamic line. I'm, I'm borrowing that word from, I'm, I'm going to use the word grammatically from the dictionary. So uh, mom, this lovely woman, she's like my godmother. After, after, after my mom, right? If my mom is not there, she makes a decision of me. When I was growing up, um, as soon as we have holiday, because this mommy, this, this, this mother, all her children, they're boys. So um, she, she was fascinated by, by, by Buki. By Buki. And myself too, all my, all my old, old, older siblings, they're all boys. So it's like I'm in the midst of a lot of boys. I call myself pineapple. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I was somewhat like a, a spoiled brat in a good sense because maybe that's where I acquire a lot of my knowledge, a lot of my tenacity. A lot of my uh, uh, confidence, you know, go getting desire. I grew up in the midst of a lot of people. But to go back to the story I'm about to tell today, mommy, when when I was growing up, when in in when I was younger, I was I I, I used to get sick a lot. And when we go to mommy's house for Christmas. You know, for any holiday, as soon as the bell rings, bang, um, holiday is coming, holiday is coming, no more. You remember that song? Goodbye, teachers, goodbye, fellas, call and turn, uh, cause I'm going to enjoy happy holiday, my happy holiday. Nigerians, you will remember that song, or Africans will remember that song. As soon as that bell rings, I'm going, I get home, I tell my dad, my mom, I'm going to mommy. I'm going to Felele <laughs> in Ibadan. She spoils me, rotten. She loves me so much. She adores me so much. She can give me anything. 
and the mother that I'm talking about, <laughs> when I get there, our cousins from other areas of Nigeria, the from Oshobo, from Lagos, from everywhere, we all meet there. Even from UK, from America, everybody, we meet there. And you think mommy spoils me? She spoils all of us equally. Now, during the uh, uh, the long vacation, we call it Christmas time. A lot of us, imagine like 50 people in one compound. We cook every bag of rice. Anything we want to cook is in bulk and bulk and bulk. One woman did that for everybody. Now, on top of that, um, in the morning, there, there will be a lot of people that come to visit her. We, when we were growing up, we used to think they come to visit, right? Later, when we grew older, is when we, I, because mommy, you know, she embodies that statement that Jesus says, I know be Isa, Ali Salatu Wasalam. When what you're doing with your right hand, don't let your left hand know. No. And what you do with your left hand, let not your right hand know. Not. She will, every guest in the back flat will go into mommy's living room one by one. They are all, all eating. And it, the, everybody goes happily. She was solving their problems. Everybody. This woman, she is serving God. Now, um, before I go to that, this woman, she is, um, you remember I said when I was younger, I used to get sick a lot. And I, I was, it was around the holiday time I was in their house. And when I'm sick, right, when I was sick, she wouldn't let me sleep with everybody, you know, and I would sleep on her bed. I used to think, oh my God, this bed is massive. It's like triple master, deluxe master bed. You know, the, the little book in me then, the bed was massive to me. That's why I sleep. She spoils me. What hurts? What's wrong? A headache, whatever. My first holy book, she was the one that gave it to me. It was a Bible. It was a Yoruba Bible. Then I was not feeling well, and I slept. And when holiday was over, I was about to go home, and she said, Bukola, take this and put it on your bed and look at it and she knows we're Muslims, but that is what she has. And she gave it to me. Back then, there were no uh, uh, Quran that are non Arabics. So, and even the Bible she gave me was a Yoruba Bible. So I was able to read it then. So, my first holy book, she gave it to me. And I always say to myself, the work of Allah nobody can do it so don't you dare judge who goes to heaven who goes to hell because as soon as you judge that somebody is going to hell you have given yourself a master key to hell so don't judge if you think somebody is doing anything wrong just say to Allah uh, the steps of the righteous are ordered by God Allah order the step to the right path and I used to think to myself, Mommy, there is no way she's not going to paradise. For real. Yeah, we can say that. Because when we admire people, we can say that. And we pray for people. God, please, this person is on the right path. Let them stay there. Mommy embodies everything that God wants us to do in this world. Everything the Quran tells us to do in this life, mommy embodies it. Everything that the Bible tells us to do in this life, 
Mommy embodies it. She does not discriminate. Christians, Muslims, she doesn't discriminate. The imams, the pastors, the alphas, they come visit her. She solved their problems. <laughs> Alpha got problems too now. Pastors got problems too. Imams got problems too. They don't announce their problems in the mosque. Everybody has someone that you know. Allah, I know when I go to this place, my problem will be solved. Nobody will know that she does anything for you. Heck, when I was coming to the United States, she contributed to the fund to buy my ticket when I was coming to America for the first time. Why am I telling these stories? So I'm thinking, I always thought, because I pray for her a lot, and I always thought to myself, everlasting God, she has to go to paradise. Anyone that does this, because there's nothing, when I'm reading the Quran, is defining her. Now, when you are on the right path, you know who doesn't, who doesn't like you being on the right, right path? Shaitan. Issue. They are crossed. Shaitan doesn't like it. And the good, the better you are for Allah, the more testing you're going to go through. The more you are on the right path, the more you give your life to Almighty God, the more you are serving God, the more test you get. The more, because for you to graduate to the next level, Allah will test you. And Shaitan may be thinking, He's the one throwing it as obstacles on your path. But Muslims, Muminis, Mumins, Muminas, we don't see it as obstacles. People of God see it as a test from Allah and a test to go to the next level. That's how you always see obstacles in life. And Shaitan will say, you remember how we did it with Job, Anabi Ayuba? I'm not going to go too far into that because I'm trying to keep this short. Says God, he's only serving you because you have blessed him with everything. If I take it away, he won't serve you anymore. He will curse you. And then I say, okay, go ahead. He will see he will not curse me. And he, he did everything to Anabi Ayuba, the uh, prophet Job. And he withstood that test and he triumphed. He passed So Shaitan went to Allah and says, ah, this woman that you love so much, you bless her with money, beautiful children, beautiful grandbabies, all the good things of the world, a lot of money, faith. She's the deacon of the deaconess of the church. She's doing well. She's let us test her. She will cost you all, Almighty oh God. And Allah gave Shaitan that permission. And she time tested mommy. I want to say this quick. I want to take this break. My family, um, when you watch this video, on the day that I upload this video, because since I have not spoken with mommy in a little while, please share it with her. This is my message to her. And it's my gift to her. Echimix, Dacosta, Sugar, Please, make sure mommy hears this message. Make sure mommy hear, hears, yeah, hear this message. And Shaitan tested her. Allah gave Shaitan the permission. A few months ago, if you noticed my last episode, I was wearing black, beautiful black simplified shirt. I was a little sad. Mother's Day time. Go and watch my last episode before this one. I was down. It hit me. Because the oldest of all of us, Almighty God, called him to glory. Almighty God called him to glory. And that is mommy's firstborn. 
he came to the world and he did everything allow one human being to do in this life he gave charity he was married he has children he grew he's, he wasn't a young well he's the oldest of all of us and if i'm saying he's my big big brother you can tell that he's not a young man Allah tested you, mommy. And you are passing it. Because as that news hit me. It hit me bad. And then people, when I call my mom, and my mom is telling me that mommy is even ministering to people. Of course, it will hit her. But when she came out of that face, She was even ministering to people. I pray to Almighty God, Mommy, that this doesn't shake your faith. I pray to Almighty God that Shaitan doesn't win. Shaitan will not win. You have you've been winning and you will win. Continue to win. The good news to this is you're already a high-ranked creation of Allah. And Allah leveled you up. Allah says, anytime, uh, 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 anytime we take away a child from a mother or father, Allah will send the angels to go, what is the parent saying? And then the angels come back and say, oh, the mother said, inna lillahi wa inna ilahi rajiun. To Allah we have come, and to him we shall all return. Of course the mother cried, but the mother said that. Allah will say, write it down. When that mother dies, the first person to welcome her will be that child. That means you have blessed you in rank, and you have blessed that child that left you. Our big brother, when he wrote it, he wrote it to live before you. You wrote longer lifespan than you did. That's why, mommy, Satan will never win. Satan will never win. You are too strong. And may you continue to be strong. Mommy, I know it's not easy. But God will never take you this far to leave you. God will never leave you and he will never forsake you. This is not an occurrence to, to, to break you. This is an occurrence to elevate you spiritually physically and and algenatally I, I hope that word makes sense in heaven by the grace of almighty god god has a special gift for you and you have earned yourself a special angel mommy don't cry don't cry we love you you have raised all of us. Look at me. You have raised all of us the right path. You have led all of us. Look, it's a lot of us. All of us, we used to celebrate together and eat together and holiday together. Now all of us, we're everywhere all over the world. UK, Canada, United States. We're all over the place. Australia, Lagos, everywhere we are. And you travel all over because we have sowed so much seed across the world. Mommy, I know since that happened, I have not spoken with you because I couldn't bring myself to hear your voice. It hit me. It hit me a lot. But I want to tell you that I love you. I want to tell you that I'm, I'm grateful. I want to tell you that God loves you more. I want to tell you, mommy, that this that happened to you is God's way of showing you love. If you know what God has intended before this can happen to you, you will say, Alhamdulillah. God says, I will never ever test you beyond your capacity. He only did this to you because he knows that you can, you can withstand it. I pray to Almighty God to help you to go through this and come out on top.
and overcome. I pray, Almighty oh God, that you never, ever, ever have to experience this ever again. I pray to Almighty oh Allah that the children that my brother, my big brother, daily left for you, they will grow to surpass anywhere brother could have ever gone or destined to could have ever gone. I pray to Almighty God that you never cry over your children. I pray to Almighty God to hold you and give you strength and increase you spiritually, psychologically, physically, mentally, and allegiance to <laughs> I pray to Allah that when we meet in Allegiance, we all sit together with the wives of the prophets. I pray to Almighty God that we'll be next door neighbors. Mommy, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Thank you. Thank you for everything you did for me. Thank you for everything you did for all of us. Thank you for every way you've sown the seed of love across the world. You are the true champion. And I love you and we love you. On behalf of all of us, every one of us, say thank you. We love you. Everything I say that is good. Ugly and adoration be unto Almighty God, the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. And everything I say that is bad or almost not to par, may Almighty God forgive me. Allah, forgive me. I am just your perfect imperfections. Allah, please take care of mommy. Please take care of her. Take care of her. I love you. I love you all. Bubabiyamo. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Bubabiyamo. Any for you so come on. Any for you so come on. Like Barolam. Like Barolam. I love you. If we went along that, if you read that, just know anyone that God has tested with the loss of a child, this message is for you. And the same love I'm giving to mommy, I extend it to you all. Allah loves you. I love you. I love you. But no matter how much I love you, God loves you more. And I know that you love me. But no matter how much you love me, Almighty God will always love me more. Until next time, keep it simple. Be kind to one another. Express love. And remember, embody the message of Anabi Isa. Salam